Hi, my name is Sam Carwin. I'm the Educating Advocate here at Interfaith Alliance. I'm so excited to celebrate Pride Month with you. I decided the best way was through a little bit of education, which is my role, and some history, which is so important for us to look back on. So pride itself, what does the word mean? So it's the state of being proud, having practical level of self-esteem and self-respect. Some people choose to be proud in the clothes that they wear. Other people choose to show their pride in their signatures, on their email, but we all can show pride in different ways depending on where we are and the communities that we live in. I wanted to start this ABCs of Pride Month with Two-Spirit. It's an identity that people often haven't heard of. It is an honor to those on whose land we stand. It emerged in 1990 at the third annual intertribal Native American First Nations Gay Lesbian American Conference. It's an umbrella term. It's a way to acknowledge the more than 130 different words that tribes use to describe Two-Spirit. These are some of the words you'll see on the screen, though there are so many more. It's recognizing that a person's body can simultaneously house a feminine and masculine spirit, thus making them two-spirit. The word two-spirit is a direct translation of an Ojibwa word. It should only be used by individuals who are Native or First Nation individuals because it is unique to the Native culture. It can describe across the demographics someone's gender identity, their sexual orientation, and their spiritual being. We're gonna jump into A. So A, we're gonna talk about Lucy Hicks Anderson. She was an African-American trans woman. She was a chef, a prohibition era entrepreneur, entrepreneur, excuse me. She told her parents that she was a girl before even entering school. And they took her to a doctor and that doctor encouraged her parents to raise her as such. She didn't receive any backlash until she was 59 years old. She was accused of fraud for her marriage to a man. At the trial, she stated, I defy any doctor in the world to provide or prove that I am a woman. I have lived, dressed, and acted just as I am a woman. So Lucy here is going to help us recognize the importance of how do we support people who are assigned a particular gender. So when they're born, a doctor is looking at a child at their physical sex and based on the appearance of one's physical sexual characteristics is assigning them one or another. So that is our A for assigned sex and Lucy Hicks Anderson. Next thing we're gonna talk about are really the trailblazers in this movement for pride, which started as a riot. The Stonewall riot was in 1969, and these were two of the biggest advocates and instigators. So Marsha P. Johnson, sometimes referred to as Queen Mother, she moved to New York in 1966. Unlike Sylvia, who was actually born in New York to Puerto Rican and, Af and Venezuelan parents, Sylvia Rivera, and Marsha P. Johnson worked together to build a shelter for transgender people. Johnson fought for LGBTQ rights all of her life. She joined ACT UP to advocate for people with AIDS. Rivera became an advocate for trans protection under the New York Sexual Orientation Non-Discrimination Act. And they are here to represent BIPOC, which is a word that we often use. It means Black Indigenous people of color. It's an umbrella term. It's a way to refer to the particular group that are representing those in those groups by Indigenous and people of color as a whole. So sometimes you'll see QBHOC and BIPOC, so creating spaces specifically for that group. So another person that you might not have heard of is Ma Rainey. She identifies as an African-American bisexual woman. She was an amazing singer and performer. She was one of the earliest professional blues singer. She's often called the mother of the blues. She made over a hundred records within just a span of five years. Later in life, she owned and ran two successful theater companies until she passed. And that was after her career in blues when the depression hit. And that wasn't quite as profitable as it previously had been was when she went into doing theater work instead. Ma is here to represent bisexual, a person who's, <clears throat> excuse me, who has an attraction sexually, romantically, emotionally to people with the same and to people with a different gender or gender identity as themselves. So 
Magnus is our next person that we're going to be talking about. And Magnus was a gay Jewish man. He's often known for being a German doctor and a sexologist. He's the one who recognized the universality of homosexuality in 1897. He founded the Scientific Communitarian Committee, the first ever gay rights organization. They sought to repeal the law that criminalized homosexuality in Germany. Though he had amazing work, a lot of it actually was destroyed. And he's here to represent what is cisgender? So sometimes people don't know what that word means. So cisgender is a person who identifies as a sex that they were assigned as birth throughout their life. So that would be someone who's cisgender rather than later on in life, they might identify differently and identify as transgender or something else. So Divine. So Divine is a stage name. Their actual name was Harry Glenn Milstead and they are a gay white man. They were an actor and a drag queen. The term drag actually came from theater. So drag was dressed as a girl. It was a way to describe someone who wore women's clothing but were actually men. And they're people who identify as men. They may present in this exaggerated feminine way as part of their performance. So there's drag queens, but there's also drag kings as well. So what is drag? A person dresses up and performs in a highly stylized way. And it's just for entertainment. It's not how they would dress in their day-to-day -day lives. So if you don't know Willie Ninja, he is considered to be one, he's a gay African-American man, but he's also a dancer, a choreographer and a model. So he is known as the godfather of voguing. So it was a fixture of ball culture in Harlem and you can actually see him in music videos. He appeared in Madonna's music video Vogue. He is representing expression. So that is the external manifestation of gender. It's expressed through a person's name, maybe their pronouns, their clothing, their haircut, behavior, voice, and are their body characteristics is how are they expressing who they are. We're gonna talk a little bit about Josephine Baker. So Josephine Baker was an African-American bisexual woman. She was a dancer, a singer, an actress, an activist, and a spy. So she actually became a French citizen when World War II broke out. And that's when she became a spy for the French government. She used her celebrity to sneak messages across the border. She toured the US in the 1950s, refusing to perform for segregated audience and was actually at the March on Washington as well. So she's here to represent feminine. So that's a person who expresses or identifies with femininity. So if you look up Josephine Baker, you'll see some of the beautiful things that she wore that would fall under that category of feminine or femininity. Frida Kahlo. So she is a Mexican bisexual woman. She was a painter. And though it wasn't until decades after her death that her work was really received the popularity of today, oftentimes she paint pictures of herself. And if you look at her paintings, you'll see that she was wearing elaborate traditional costumes or clothing that a Mexican woman would wear, but she often cross-dressed. And you can see in her paintings, other times her wearing more masculine clothing. And she's here to represent gender, gender fluid. So it's a person who does not identify with a single fixed gender, or it's a person who has an expression that's fluid or unfixed from gender identity. So like Frida, you might dress one way, one way a particular day, and then a different way you might express your gender differently. So JC was a gay white man. He was a famous illustrator. He's credited with popularizing the modern image of Santa Claus and the New Year baby. He's most well known for illustrating the arrow collar man, which was a handsome, sophisticated mascot for shirt collars. People didn't know, but the model for advertising actually was his lover who he lived with until his death. So it's important to recognize heterosexism. So it's this presumption that everyone is or should be heterosexual. And that's something that likely was experienced by him throughout his life. So we're gonna talk this symbol. We don't have a picture of Stella Walsh quite like the other pictures, but I wanted to make sure that we we're highlighting Stella and the life that she lived. So Stella was a Polish American woman. She ran track and field. She was well known as a women's track coach later in her life. She competed five times in the Olympics. And though she was born in Poland, she was raised in the United States. She often said it was her adopted country. And later on, she did obtain citizenship. 
when she was born and on her death, certif death certificate, you will see that she is marked as female, but there was some speculation. And so upon her death, they did an autopsy. At that time, they recognized that she had some ambiguous genitalia. And then she also had an XY and an XO chromosome. So today we would refer to her as intersex. It's an umbrella term. It describes people born with reproductive, sexual anatomy and or chromosome patterns that can't be classified as solely male or female. So like Stella, that might be chromosomes, that might be your external genitalia or your internal genitalia, which often is referred to as your reproductive anatomy. Pauline Newman. <clears throat> she was a lesbian woman. She was born in Lithuania and she later immigrated to the United States after her father's death. She fought early in life for her education. She wanted to attend public schools, but they would not accept Jewish people. And then Jewish schools would not accept women, but she was able to fight her way in. And later she became a labor union organizer and workers' right activist. You might have heard of the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory. That was one of the places where she did some advocacy work. When she was 20, she led a group of independent women to organize a rent strike. And this was in 1908. 10,000 families refused to pay their rent, and it was the largest rent strike the city had ever seen. The following year, she organized another strike of 40,000 female garment workers. And so she's here representing lesbian because she was a woman who was attracted to other women. It's also used as an adjective describing such women. So Miss Major Griffin. If you've looked into her, you'll know she's an African-American trans woman. She's an activist. She was one of the Stonewall veterans and mentors. She was at Stonewall Inn when the raid happened in 1969. She actually was knocked unconscious during the riot. And when she woke up, she was in jail. She would return to prison early throughout the 70s. And while she was there, because she was placed in a male's prison, she met leaders of the Attica riots. They were greatly, she was greatly influenced by their work. And so she spent her life caring for trans women of color, in particular, those who were in the prison system. And she started a resource center during the height of the AIDS epidemic as well. So she's here representing marginalized, someone who's excluded, ignored, or relegated to the outer edges of society. Non-binary. So this is a symbol, a variety of people identify under that umbrella of non-binary. It's a term used by some people who experience their gender identity or their gender expression as falling outside of the categories of man or woman. Bayard Rustin. So Bayard Rustin was an activist. He was an African-American gay man, a civil rights organizer. He organized protests against segregation in the military. He refused to give up a seat on a bus a decade before Rosa Parks, and he spent two years in prison. During that time, he sought to desegregate the dining halls. He was a devoted student of Gandhi and Quakerism, and he actually helped shape Martin Luther King Jr.'s philosophies of nonviolence and civil disobedience. In 1986, Rustin testified on behalf of the New York's gay rights bill. What he fought for and what so many fought for against is oppression. So how are we addressing the power dynamics that are in our society? How can people use the power that they have to support other people instead of using the power that they have for domination? Pansexual, this is a wonderful symbol of pansexuality. So it's a term referring to the potential for sexual attraction or romantic love towards people of all gender identities and biological sexes. So queer is a term often used and we're gonna talk a little bit. So he was a gay Japanese man. He was an author, a poet, a playwright, an actor, director, and a bodybuilder. In 1958, he entered into this arranged marriage and he had two children, but he was continuing to engage in gay relationships as well. Queers often now used as an umbrella term, so it can refer to anyone who transgresses society's view of what gender and sexuality should be. He's a perfect example of that, having been ridiculed early in life for being too effeminate and then later becoming one of a militia leader and becoming someone who also was a bodybuilder. Recognizing that though the word queer is being reclaimed and people are using it to represent the entire community, it's important to know that not everyone is comfortable with the word queer and there are people who do not use it and do consider it a slur. 
So Billie Jean King is an athlete, a tennis champion in particular, a lesbian white woman. And in 1973, the current male world champion Bobby Riggs claimed that women tennis was inferior, that he could be any female player. So King reluctantly, but she accepted that challenge. And in a publicized match that they call Battle of the Sexes, she beat Bobby Riggs. So she's here to represent sexism. So that prejudice thoughts and discriminatory behavior based on the difference in sex or gender, it's usually by men against women, but we also can see it by women against trans individuals and other individuals who are not in their particular group. So here's some of the flags. So if you are driving by a pride parade or as you see right now, all of the ads popping up, you're gonna see some opportunities to buy pride flags. So the first one is asexual. There's a few different colors there. So that's a person who doesn't feel a sexual attraction to another person. That does not mean that they don't engage in sexual behavior. It depends on the person and what their relationship dynamics are. But asexual people do not feel sexual attraction to individuals regardless of whether that person is one gender or another. Bisexual flag you'll see is the pink and the blue. Sometimes people will put one color on top for the particular group that they are more attracted to, but bisexual people are attracted to, like I said earlier, their gender or gender identity and others. Demisexual is a word you might be hearing more frequently. So that's someone who doesn't inherently feel a sexual attraction, but rather as they get to know someone, they feel more attracted to someone. So we have the intersex flag with the circle there to represent wholeness, that intersex individuals are born whole and there is no reason to perform any surgeries on our intersex babies. L is for lesbian. So this is the lesbian flag. You have the pansexual flag. You have your non-binary flag, your transgender flag, and then last but not least, the traditional flag. So the pride flag when it came to be was at a pride parade in 1978. There was a seamstress, there was someone who helped diet and clothing designers, and the three of them worked together to create the pride flag. The pride flag also stands for particular colors. So the red is for life, the orange is for healing, the yellow is for sunlight, the green is for nature, the blue is for serenity, and the purple is for spirit. More recently now, you'll see a flag like this that has the rainbows and then the other colors as well to recognize that black and brown people need to be highlighted in this movement, that they were at the center of the movement as our trans individuals. So you'll see the trans flag and the black and brown stripe to represent black and brown people. So this pride, we're hoping that you reframe the notion that pride is only for the young or that there aren't LGBTQ people throughout history because we know that LGBTQ people have been here since the dawn of time and will be here forever. I wanna give a shout out to queerportraits.com. All of the imagery you saw was from them. So take the time to go check out their website, get a little bit of history, learn a little bit more and download, pay for some art.